Hello everyone. So here I'm starting with one first year chapter also. So as I had said earlier, we'll be starting the first year and second year parallelly. So the in second year we have started with the genetics and the first year I'm starting it with the plant kingdom. One of the most basics as well as very important chapter from both neat point of view as well as from the PU point of view. Okay. So in this chapter we will be studying in detail the classification okay we will be studying the classification within the plant kingdom okay classification within the plant kingdom so we all know what is rh whittaker rh whittaker system of classification and that is a five kingdom classification isn't it it is five kingdom classification and according to this five kingdom we have monera we have monera and the second one is protista protista and then we have a uh, fungi then animalia and plantae plantae okay so these are the five kingdoms and among them so we'll pick up the plantae first and then we'll move on to the animalia and then we'll take up the other ones because these two are quite larger groups and a very important chapters actually so i have chosen the plantae first so let's move on to the chapter now See, before this RH Whittaker system of classification, there were other systems which were called as two system, three system, four system, isn't it? So, in all these systems, there were few organisms, that is fungi and members of the monera, okay? Fungi, comma, members of monera and protista protista having having cell walls having cell walls actually the distinguishing feature of the plant is having the cell wall isn't it so what they had done is fungi and few members of monera and protista which had cell wall they all were actually placed under the kingdom called as plantae but as in the time changed these members were placed to the respective kingdoms and and according to the new classification so now there is one organism which is called as cyanobacteria okay so this cyanobacteria which is also called as blue green algae fine i'll repeat it again see few members okay not all few members of fungi and members of monera protista which were having cell walls were actually placed under the plantae and this cyanobacteria it actually belongs to the monera i mean currently it belongs to the monera but previously what they had done is they had placed the cyanobacteria also in the plantae because it had cell wall so later on after a proper classification after the origination of the five kingdom system of classification so this cyanobacteria was moved to the monera so this blue green algae is no more a algae it is a bacteria okay it is not a algae it is a bacteria so which are the groups or which are the classes that we are going to study under the kingdom plantae so under plant kingdom we will be studying first one is algae second one is bryophytes third one is pteridophytes and then fourth one is gymnosperms and then fifth one is angiosperms so these are the five groups which we are going to study in detail but before moving to these groups we will just see some classification systems of the plant kingdom 
in the classification systems we actually have three main types of classification the first one is artificial artificial system of classification second one is natural system of classification and third one is phylogenetic phylogenetic system of classification so we'll first pick the artificial one what exactly is involved in the artificial system of classification artificial system of classification this artificial system of classification is mainly based on or it involves one or two or probably a few okay a few morphological few morphological characters characters for grouping okay it actually involves one or few morphological characteristics for grouping an example for such characteristics are we can consider actually the color color number number and shape and shape of leaves okay so such simple characteristics are being chosen in the artificial system of classification and this is actually proposed by or this artificial system classification is based on the proposals of the characteristics which are given by aristotle and linnaeus and linnaeus next one is natural natural system of classification so here what are the what is the basis of the classification is so the organ the organisms in the systems are being classified on the basis of the natural affinities and it considers both the external as well as internal features in case of the artificial system what what was considered only the morphological characteristics morphological characteristics means only the external characteristics whereas here the external and internal okay external and internal external is morphological it is morphological internal internal means it is anatomical okay so both morphological and anatomical characteristics are being considered here and this was actually proposed by joseph joseph dalton hooker joseph dalton hooker along with him the credit also is been shared by george george bentham okay so these are the two people who actually have given the natural system of the classification and then we have next one that is phylogenetic phylogenetic system of classification phylogenetic system of classification and the basis for this is is evolutionary characteristics it is evolutionary relations or characteristics between between various various organisms various organisms so one important statement which you have to remember here is organisms organisms belonging to the same taxa to the same taxa have have common ancestors see what exactly this means is 
One simple logic which we all know is that all the living organisms have the same ancestors. We all have originated from a unicellular organisms, isn't it? So, somehow we all have evolved from one single organism. So, if, if you consider a population, for example, if you consider a human population, okay, if you consider a human population, in this population, most of the characteristics will be same among the organisms. That is because we all have originated from one single ancestor or we have, we have common ancestor actually. So when we have common ancestors, definitely the characteristics which were there in this ancestor only might have come to us, isn't it? So definitely the similar characteristics organisms are being placed under, under one population. So what this statement states is organisms belonging to the same taxa, taxa means group, okay, same group or taxa have common ancestors, okay, so these are three classification systems. After classifying the organisms, the next task is to name the organisms, see once we classify the organisms based on the characteristics into separate groups or separate taxa. Next, every group have to given a name or every organism should be given a name and that naming is called as the taxonomy. It is called as taxonomy. So, here we again have few branches of the taxonomy or we see different systems used in the taxonomy and among them the first one is the numerical numerical taxonomy so what exactly this numerical taxonomy means is so it involves the usage of the numerical methods okay it involves the usage of numerical methods to evolve the similarities and dissimilarities between the species and this is done with the help of the computers. Okay. Based on the observations of the characteristics, I mean if you have a particular group of organisms or groups of organisms, so we have to see the similarities, similarities and dissimilarities dissimilarities and then this the characters which are similar as well as the characters which are dissimilar so these are being accounted using the help of the computers so that is called as a numerical taxonomy so next method is we have cyto taxonomy so, this is mainly based on the cytological, cytological information which mainly includes the chromosome, the chromosome number, number, comma, structure, behavior and etc. So, based on the chromosome number, structure and behavior, the cytotaxonomy is being applied. The third method is the chemotaxonomy. It is chemotaxonomy. So, what is this chemotaxonomy? So, this is mainly based on the chemical constituents of the plant. So, chemical, actually very, very important, chemical constituents of the plants. So, what do you do, what do you mean by this chemical constituent? What exactly is involved in this chemical constituent? So, for example, DNA sequence, okay, DNA sequence and then nature of the proteins, proteins. So, likewise, the different types of compounds or molecules present in the plants are being used by scientists to 
classify the organism production of a particular group of proteins production of a particular group of molecules will separate one group from the another group so this is how the chemical constituents of the plants are also the basis of the chemo taxonomy okay so these are the branches of taxonomy as well as few systems of the classification so as i've said there are five groups in the plant kingdom and the first one is the algae in the next class we will take up the algae